Hey guys, I'd like to welcome you back to part 13 of this polymer clay sculpting demonstration. This is the final video. In this video, I'm going to be baking this little baby elephant that I made previously. And in this video, I'm going to talk about baking and let you know everything that I know. And uh, whatever I miss, maybe you can help me out, you know, fill me in on the comments below. But without further ado, the gray clay used on this elephant is a 50-50 mixture of two different clays from Sculpey, Super Sculpey, and Super Sculpey Firm. The instructions on both those clays are identical, 15 minutes per quarter inch thickness, so nothing's really going to change. So I'll be baking this project at 275 degrees for 45 minutes because I feel the thickest area is roughly 3 quarter inches thick, it's probably the legs area. This sculpture has been sitting for four months in the same spot, uncovered, in the bathroom. What you're seeing right now is basically where it's been sitting, just free counter space in our bathroom, which at the time, it just worked for me. I didn't do anything special other than maybe hang a towel up to cover the, you know, to keep the light, the direct sunlight off of it. But other than that, it hasn't even been covered, so it's got dust on it and stuff like that. Uh... It probably doesn't hurt to cover your projects, you know. I just try to make a point that it does not dry out. This clay is, is amazing. It will wait on you. It's probably the greatest quality or uh, feature of, of polymer clay is the fact that it doesn't dry out. So long as it's on a non-porous surface like glass, metal, or marble, um, stuff like that, it won't draw out that oils, the oils in the in the clay. So yeah, that's where I've been storing it, and it's in great condition. I just recently moved it over here onto this, my work area. You know, that way it could stay safe where it was at. If doing that, it probably is a good idea to look over the sculpture and make sure nothing has changed. And in this case, nothing has changed on it. No cracking, no settling or anything like that. Another thing that I want to mention is it's good to have a thermostat for your oven. There are cheap little devices, just a few dollars. You can buy one at Walmart, and um, I got a nice little all-metal one that I could put in the oven. The purpose of this is so you can really know what's going on inside your oven as opposed to just relying on what the dial says. And like, for example, we have a digital oven, and I, I really don't know if it reaches 275 degrees and it stays. Does it stay at that temperature? Is there a cold spots? Um you know, does it fluctuate? You'll be able to know, know all those things with a thermostat, and it's very good to have one. So um, this is actually the first time I'm going to be using a thermostat. I've always not used a thermostat. Another thing that I kind of realized, I've been preheating my oven to whatever temperature it needed, and I would put the project with the marble and all, the whole slab, right into the oven, which this is kind of bad because the marble is cold, it's room temperature, and basically it'll act as a giant heat sink and it'll just absorb, you know, a lot of the energy that's in the oven, it'll absorb right into the marble, altering and tampering with your bake time and the temperatures. It'll drop in temperature. Uh, not only that, the marble itself will kind of protect the clay from the heat, so the little parts that are touching the marble may not be cooked all the way. About baking, but you'll find that a lot of artists on here and they have their their own little thing going on here's my take on it as far as the actual temperature goes you can alter the temperature only by lowering it never do you ever want to go higher than what the actual temperature says it won't it won't help you um but you can slightly lower the temperature and bake it for a little longer however keep in mind that what polymer clay is is microscopic little particles pieces of plastic, uh, like the shape of balls, so to speak, but they're microscopic and they're in a oil, clear oil solution that gives it its clay-like consistency. It's not clay at all. In fact, it's plastic, but it has clay characteristics, so it's called polymer clay. Well, at a certain temperature, these clay particles fuse together and form one solid unified piece of plastic. I think this is also called vulcanization. I don't know if that applies to this or not. 
So if you if you actually raise the temperature higher than what the package is telling you to do, you're going to bake the outside of it too fast and the inside's not going to be baked enough and it will cause complications. Unbaked clay applied to or you know within poorly baked polymer clay, it causes it to uh, corrupt. Like unbaked clay will cause baked clay to crack and crumble and, and just det deteriorate. It like neutralizes what the oven did. The oven makes it permanent, but raw clay can kind of mess up cooked clay. So if you bake in stages, you should bake every time you should bake the project for at least 15 minutes to kind of uh, finalize it. You have to actually do that. I had a problem with a prana plant where it was causing cracks and where I I had baked something, a shell, and I added clay to it, and it just all got all messed up. So yeah, if you decide to bake in stages, it's a it's a, you got to be committed. You have to bake every time. I like to build the entire sculpture and then put it in the oven. You can do that as well. Uh, I've never actually baked in stages. I'm going to actually try this eventually. I promise you. Okay, now for the part you all been waiting for. It's time to bake something. Before preheating the oven, I like to open the door and arrange space for the item first. You can use a tape measure to double check for clearance instead of using the actual item. The less moving it, the better, right? I try to keep at least one to two inches from the walls and the ceiling. Uh, if you have to lower the rack, keep in mind that'll bring your baking surface closer to the heating element. And when the oven kicks on periodically to maintain that temperature, it could cause a drastic change in the surface temperature of your baking surface. Personally, I feel to help with that, just use thicker, more heavier duty material like marble or a thicker pan. Your cooking surface needs to be dedicated to polymer clay. It could be any kind of sheet metal, oven safe glass, marble, whatever it is, it should be flat. Personally, I found marble holds its shape, whereas metal pans tend to kind of warp over time. Next, preheat the oven to whatever temp the directions on the package calls for. Follow the higher temperature when mixing two or more clays if the temperatures differ from one another. Also, if using a piece of marble as a baking surface, preheat the oven with the marble in it. That'll help reduce the drop in temperature when you put a cold piece of marble in your preheated oven. Next, bake for the length of time the clay specifies for, and in this case it's 45 minutes. Follow the longest bake time if there's a difference between the two clays when using a mixture of clays. For example, Super Sculpey, Sculpey, Sculpey 3 are all 15 minutes per quarter inch thickness, but Sculpey Primo and Kato are up to 30 minutes per quarter inch thickness. So if you mix one pound of Kato with, I'd say, Sculpey 3, I would stick to the 30 minutes. But if you're mixing Super Sculpey and Super Sculpey Firm, just stick with the 15 minutes since nothing changed. Next, gently place the item on the baking surface, close the door, and set the timer. When baking is complete, remove the item from the oven. Careful! It is now in its most fragile state the polymer clay ever is in, is when it first comes out of the oven when it's piping hot. It has no structural strength whatsoever. It doesn't gain its strength until it completely cools. It's brittle like soap bubbles. If you're not completely confident with removing the item from the oven without causing damage, just open the door all the way and partially slide the rack out like halfway and let it cool sitting right there. Next, you want to be sure not to disturb your item for at least three or four hours or until it's cold to the touch. Personally, I like to wait until the next day before doing any heavy sanding or further tooling on the item. That way I know for a fact it's done set up from cooling. Since this is gray clay and elephants are gray, I really don't see any sense in painting this, so I'm not going to paint it, but you can paint your sculptures with acrylic paints. Uh, it's the only paint I've used so far as acrylic, any kind of acrylic paints. Um, you can also pre-paint your sculptures and bake it with the paint on it to permanently fuse the paint to the clay. I haven't tried this yet, but you're supposed to be able to do that as well. I sometimes rub it down with some steel wool to take off all the little debris like hairs and stuff that kind of baked onto it and it cleans it up and gives it a, a nice clean look. I seal my stuff with shellac. It's from Zanzer Bullseye. It's a pretty good product. It don't get sticky even after years of, of sitting. Uh, I always use just a spray can. 
Okay, so you're probably wondering, how did this turn out? So let's have a quick look. At first glance, it appears to be a very, very good bake. There doesn't seem to be any visible flaws when it's sitting in its normal stance. Upon closer inspection, I did notice that there were some incomplete areas underneath the sculpture by the butt area and also by the leg. I also noticed a hairline crack underneath the chin right next to a couple other places that were unfinished which is kind of unusual because I could see that area pretty well. There were just areas that could have been smoothed better or maybe a little more clay added. It's not a structural issue with the sculpture and it could easily be corrected by maybe being dug out and some epoxy sculpt added or even this same gray clay with the addition of some TLS translucent liquid sculpting could fix this pretty easily if not some super glue all in all I think this is a pretty good little sculpture um, aside maybe from some issues with the proportions as mentioned in the comments in some previous videos but that's pretty much it for this series guys I really appreciate you for taking the time to you know sit through this and watch all this and I hope it's been you know somewhat entertaining for you it was it was for me making it and I really enjoyed doing it here are a few hand-picked photos of this elephant during the sculpting process usually I share all my photos to polymer clay sculpting on Facebook but I've been really distracted lately so I'll probably have to upload all these at once but when considering all the projects I've done combined, there are hundreds of photos on that that you can check out. If you're bored or whatever, I'll leave a link in the video description. Let me know what you think about this project in general, and what would you like to see as another full-blown project. Let me know in the comments below. Here is a link to part one of this video series. It is where the adventure begins. There are 12 videos involved in making this project come to life and you can watch the entire journey from start to finish at your own leisure. If you're new, I totally recommend it, and feel free to drop me a line anywhere along the way, or in every video. I'd, 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 it'd be amazing. And until next time, I will see you again soon. Thank you all for watching, and thank you for sticking by with Polymer Clay Artist. You're all awesome.